I was going to show you, We I talked a little bit about uh, the dry, wet on dry technique with the uh, smushing the paint. Um, and so let me just show you how the, the paint reacts with the, with the dry, wet on dry. Um, you get a little more vibrant color. Uh, watercolors are meant to be translucent. Um, so you can see through that's why people love them for Bible journaling because they um, They can read the words through and um, while I don't journal in my study Bible and so I'm um, Not terribly concerned if I can't read all the words through because I'm just gonna be reading off my phone Bible app or or my study Bible um, Not my journaling Bible most likely after I do a page Um but some people are really concerned about that, and so that's totally fine. I understand. Um, we all have different feelings about it. So this is um, this is the dry technique, and it will be a wet on dry, and this will be a little bit uh, darker color when you do than the wet on wet. Obviously, the water is going to spread the paint a little thinner. But you can see I could get this pretty light if I just kept dragging it. So so I just, as long as the colors are not touching, they're not going to keep running. Um, I could let this dry and do a different color in between on those stripes. And just keep doing it till you get the look you like. Um, the Bible pages do wrinkle. Um, when you put water on them, um, they tend to hill and valley. Uh, the watercolor paper won't do that, but you know we want to do art in our Bible, so um, you can, if you get really deep hills and valley puddles, you can go back in and and just kind of touch them a little bit, spread them out a little bit as they're drying. Um, the wrinkles tend to go away um, after your Bible's been closed. You know, it's all dry and you close it up and it's it's sitting and waiting for your, your next day. Um, over time, those wrinkles do tend to straighten out a bit. Okay, so that's the wet on dry technique. Two very simple things that are very fun are to do some splatters or some bleaching um, techniques. So let me show you really quick. So I'm just, I sopped up some pigment on my brush and the bigger the brush the bigger the drops uh, a lot of people use the tapping technique and just get little splatters on there and so that's kind of fun and hopefully you can see those with the hard to see with the, the print I guess um, you know we have those margins in our Bible that really show let me see if I can get some big ones there we go big splatters yay that's fun Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to dip my brush in water for this, and I'm going to drip my water back on the page. And then the longer the water droplets, I hope you can see the water droplets. Um, the longer the water droplets sit there, I don't know if that's going to be in focus. Um, the more the pigment will lift to the edge of the water droplet and kind of leave this bleached out um, section in the center. And so after I let it sit for a little bit, I'm gonna go back in and blot it. And um, this uh, Artist Loft craft paint is um, not very re-reactive with water and so it tends to I don't think you're even going to be able to really see it on the camera sorry but oh there you go you see how this one's getting a little lighter in the center so if I had waited longer it would be a lighter spot um, let me show you with the um, distress inks because remember how I said the distress inks are very re reactive with water so hopefully we'll be able to see with this and I'm gonna you can do this with um, the spray bottle. So I'm gonna just dribble, dribble some drops on here with this little eyedropper. If you wanna be more precise, I guess, as to where you want them. 
and then I'm going to just give it a minute to react. You can literally just do the drops and walk away, um, let it sit dry completely, and you would have these little rings with a dark pigment around the edge and the center would be bleached out, sort of. Having waiting, waiting, sorry, patience, patience. Oh, while we're waiting, while you're watching paint dry, I'm gonna go grab some salt from the kitchen. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that's doing better. You can definitely see those. Okay, so I didn't do it very artistically, but I, I, I did get the, the desired effect, just so you can see it. And you can kind of play around with that um, when you want just some variation to your backgrounds. Just so many options and so much fun just to, to play in. And then this is ordinary table salt, but... Um, uh, Sea salt with a little bit bigger grain is going to give you bigger, bigger spots. Um, whereas the sea salt, I mean the table salt, is going to be little tiny. So I tend to kind of pile it up, but I'm just going to sprinkle some on there and show you what effect that gets. So the salt absorbs the pigment um, from the paint and leaves just the liquid behind and then of course the water dries up and you're left with this kind of mottled starry night look I guess in the paper so again we're watching paint dry watching paint dry okay I'm gonna talk about product while we're watching paint dry this will be a good segue all right um, watercolors come in the pans and there's um, there's several different um, student grade sets that are really inexpensive and it's a really good um, way to get started playing around um, before you invest in a, a big set. Um, the Crayola and I think it's Prisma, but you know the, the kind you buy for your kids in kindergarten and send to school, those tend to bleed through especially the Crayola tend to bleed through the Bible pages, um, whereas the Artist Loft and Simply Art is the Joann's brand um, by Low Cornell. Um, they have a nice set of colors. These tend to, um, these tend to, if you put too much of this on, these on, they tend to flake. Um, the color comes off in flakes, so they're not my favorite, but the Artist Lofts do pretty well. Um, the more inexpensive watercolors are going to look more chalky on your page and more expensive watercolors are going to have more of a smooth um, texture, a shinier finish. Um, this has to dry completely before I take it off, so I'm going to keep talking product. Okay, so watercolor comes in pans um, and then it also comes in tubes. In the tubes, um, you have to put it in a palette and add water to it to get the translucency you want. Uh, and this stuff lasts forever because you don't use very much of the pigment to add the water. And if you actually have it on your palette and you're done painting and you still have paint on your palette, you can actually go ahead and let it dry on there and then it acts sort of like a pan. You just add water to it next time you go to use it. So. There's all kinds of different brands of tube uh, watercolor. There's also gouache. And gouache is a type of watercolor, but it is opaque. I don't really use these as much in my Bible journaling because they do cover up the words and, and make harder to read. I also bought this set because you can make refills for your pigment stamp kits with this and glycerin and match the color by mixing colors and that's kind of a cool little money saving tip for refilling stamp pads. I, I showed you the distress inks and they have this little blending tool and you I have a different little pad that velcros to the bottom of this that 
you can stamp in the ink and, and blend it on. Um, distress inks do bleed through. Um, they are one of the watercolors that will definitely bleed through your Bible pages. And I have a whole little article right up on our uh, Facebook group page uh, and talking all about how to pre-treat your pages for mediums that bleed. And um, I use the Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. Uh, it works really well for me. I just um, spread it on with a with a little an old gift card or like I have these I love these little picture cards that my girls had that from elementary school <laughs> they're working great as now um, to, to just kind of put on a thin layer sort of spackle it on there I guess um, and then let it dry completely um, oh that reminds me I don't have to spend so much time waiting for this paint to dry and I can get this little tip in for you so there are uh, heat guns available. Hair dryer won't really uh, work very quickly, and it will blow your page all over the place. Um, this this is a this is pretty old. This is a Marvy embossing heat tool. I know Ranger makes a nice one that looks like a little hair dryer, but it's not a hair dryer. Um, please don't blow dry your hair with them; you'll burn your hair. Uh, but this little heat gun will dry the paint quickly if you're being impatient. So you just want to keep it moving so you don't burn your page. And I'm, I'm holding it really close so that you can see. I probably would uh, normally be a little more patient and hold it back a bit. Um, this is also well, the reason it came to mind is because I use it to dry my mat gel medium when I'm pre-treating my pages and I don't want to, um, I don't want to wait for half an hour or an hour for it to dry. Um, I'll use this. All right, now let's see. So if I brush this off and it's not completely dry, it, it will not look like I want it to. <laughs> but hopefully this will work. And hopefully it was dry enough. Okay. So do you see the little speckles going on there? That's just the kind of look you get. And if you use bigger, like I said, if you use the sea salt, um, you'll get... Um, bigger white spots further apart. So this is um, just really close together, stippled looking little bleached out spots on there. Let's keep going talking about product. This is another set of pans. Um, it's a pearlescent pan and um, it, it has um, some metallics and uh, it just has a very iridescent look to them when you paint and they're so they're kind of fun and this is another artist loft set and um, Michaels has um, another set that has some larger round um, pan that's iridescent as well these are Krondash um, I'm not sure I'm saying that right uh, Neo color to water soluble color pastels um, they're they're a wax watercolor and they come in crayon form and you can either put water down on the page and literally just color on the page or um, one of the things I will do is hold the crayon and they they take a little bit to get going um, as far as to get uh, the paint on your brush um, so I I kind of do this and wet the tip or I'll, I'll actually just dip the tip in my clear water but once they once they start reacting to the water uh, they're they're very easy to keep going back to and I'll just do this for for fine detail I'll just put it on my brush and then and then just paint on there and these are not chalky at all and they absolutely no matter how much water you put with these they do not bleed through your Bible pages. You don't have to treat your page. So this is a more of an artist quality set.